there's a lot of things behind the scenes going on, like I say, that um, can can alter a fight. Um, do I think I'm going to be fighting Joshua in the next 10 minutes? Hell no. Do I think the fight will eventually happen sooner or later? Yes. It has to happen. But do I think it's imminent right next minute? No, I don't. What's good, family? Smash the like button and subscribe. So we just heard there uh, from Tyson. <gasps> Theory. Now, full disclosure, I do believe this was done around the time of the announcement that the signature and whatnot has been done. Now, to be honest, the whole signature thing, I've already exposed that. Just a quick rundown for you, man, who don't know. All the signature is, is an agreement that the next two fights will be AJ and Fury. But, as we know, that has a 28-day deadline. And also, as we know, Frank Warren has said, I don't think the fight going to happen. Flat out came out and said, I don't think it's going to happen. And then he did a rematch or a rerun with IFL TV. And in rather than, well, he did a rerun where he said, oh, I'm doing this interview now to clear up what I said last time when I said it wasn't going to happen. And everyone's, uh, me, myself included, was thinking, oh, he's going to give it to Eddie Hearn and say it's great and it's about to happen. And instead, he said, well, look, look at all the regulations changing at the moment. See, anything can happen. So he basically <laughs> backed up what he was saying in the first interview, that anything can happen. It's not looking likely. There's a whole load of things that can get in the way. That's just Frank Warren, Bob Arum, Mr. All in the Video, Mr. Big Mouth, and his organisation and his promotional outfit said as well. Well, yeah, it's been signed, or well, the fight agreement's been signed, but it's only got 28 days, and we've still got to come to agreement on the venue and the money and all this other business. So, the vibe we're getting from everyone, to be honest, even Eddie Hearn, the fact that he came out and announced a signature tells me there's a relationship or things aren't going as smoothly. Because if, if the bottom line is, all we had to do was wait 28 days, and it was all going to be done within the 28-day period, Eddie Hearn wouldn't have said nothing, would he? He's been quiet for three months. What would another month have hurt? It wouldn't have done. This is all... It's now getting political, basically. Frank Warren, Bob Arum, they're sitting there excuses. Well, look at the regulations. Oh, the, oh look, yeah. Frank Warren was buzzing. Listen, if the government announced any more regulation, BS. Frank going to be... You're going to see him on Instagram. My man don't even have Instagram. You're going to see Frank Warren make an Instagram page and say, Oh, look, yeah, he's going to turn into a BBC page. Just putting out the news about the regulations. All I've heard out of Frank Warren, in terms of AJ versus Fury, all I've heard out of Frank Warren is regulations. He knows more about the different the different tiers, and he's giving it all the tiers. I thought, Are we a, is this boxing, or is it tiers? I swear down. It's, he knows more than the doc. I'll tell you what I need to do. If they want to wrap this... This C this C nineteen up. Get Frank Warren in there. He knows he knows a bit. He knows it all. He does. He'll, he'll knock it all off. The amount of knowledge Frank Warren has about regulations. He needs to be the, the chief. What do they call it? I don't know what they call it, but he needs to be in there. Yeah. He needs to be the czar of the C nineteen. He know he all in the he all in the regulation business. Never seen some. I've never seen someone so detached or su supposedly. Met, this is he's a boxing promoter. What's he making, telling us, giving us updates on the regulation and being happy about it? He can't wait to bring that news, swear down. Frank Warren did an interview, updating his last comments, updating his last negative comments, not with positivity, but with, oh look, here's an example of what I was talking about, here's an example of something that will get in the way. <laughs> don't no one care. Them regulations don't affect America or wherever it is, or on some big yacht in Dubai. So again, that's the scene being set. I know it took three minutes, but there's a the scene set. For you, man, who think that, oh, because I'm sure there'll be some dons who say, oh, YB, this was old. It don't matter. It's all new. These, if Fury was saying, yep, we're negotiating, it's going all right, and we're going to see how it goes, I wouldn't be doing this video, because obviously everyone's sounding all right. This is beyond all right. This isn't acceptable. This isn't, it's looking like it's happening. That's why I'm doing the video. My man Fury comes out. And again, the IFL TV interviewer is so positive. Just like everyone else has been. Every single person who's interacted with Frank Warren, Tyson Fury, everyone has been super, just trying to inject some passion into Fury in their, in their camp. As if it makes the odds of this fight happening better. Begging, just trying to beg for any sort of positivity from their side. Fury res responds and says, Oh well, there's a lot of things behind the scenes that can scupper a fight like this. Oh! 
Do I think the fight's gonna happen next, in the next 10 minutes? Oh no, hell no. So, what you have to do with when Fury uses hyperbole, yeah? Like, is it gonna happen in the next 10 minutes? Just take out the 10 minutes there. That's all that means. Is it gonna happen next? No. Because the 10 minutes, that's not realistic anyway. That is just hyperbole. Yeah? Hyperbola. Yeah? If you're on a French thing, hyperbola. One of them ones, yeah? But listen, that all that is, is that's good for enough. That's a piece of throwaway information. It's almost like a, a funny piece. Oh, it's not gonna happen in the next 10 minutes, but take 10 minutes out, and that's the truth of the statement. It's not gonna happen next. Because no one, he's, he was never going to fight in 10 minutes anyway, so that piece of, the 10 minutes part is irrelevant. If he said, oh, it's not going to happen in the next two months, we might be able to work with that. Oh, it might be free. He's not saying that. It's not happening next. And not only did he say, it's not happening next, he then, he then says, hell no. Not no, not oh, well, is it going to happen next? Oh, well, it could do. He's in the, AJ's in the mix. He says, hell no, it's not happening next. Then he goes on to say, or oh, sorry, before that, or oh, sorry, then he goes on to say, will it happen later? Yes, it will happen later. But then it, he almost re-authenticates his first statement. So he starts off by saying, do I think the fight's happening in the next 10 minutes? Hell no. Then he says, will it happen later? Yes. So I'm sure the fans, after hearing, oh, it's going to happen later. That means, that means it's going to happen later. And then he double, doubles back and says, but is it in imminent? No. So essentially, he's ended his interaction, he's ended his comments on AJ and Fury on a, no, it's not happening imminently. It's nowhere near happening. And this in itself may not be that important to some of you men out there, but the fact of the matter is, later on in that same interview, he goes on to say, oh, listen, we've got, we got the... Mayweather and Pacquiao fight, that took ages to come along, and oh, and by the way, I'm going to be fighting twice this year no matter what. So in the context of them two statements, Mayweather and Pacquiao went on for years. This is the first time we've really tried to negotiate contracts, officially. Mayweather and Pacquiao went on for years like that. Initially, Floyd made a $40 million offer, like five years back in 2010, and it went dragged on to 2015. So the fact is, you and he wasn't using the Mayweather and Pacquiao example as a throwaway comment, by the way. It wasn't a throwaway. He genuinely was trying to educate the interviewer. He said, oh, yeah, but look at Mayweather and Pacquiao. Look, how, look at the great numbers that did eventually. And when you take a step back, I'm going to do a video on what he said about the Mayweather and Pacquiao thing in its own right. But when you take a step back and think, wait there, consistently Fury's been moaning about money. In fact, this interview itself was titled... I'm not doing nothing until I've got a massive pay packet. John Fury said, oh, we want 400 million. So for him, for, it, for Fury to say, it's not happening next, it's not imminent, oh, and I'm fighting twice this year no matter what. So wait there, how are you, so you're certain it's happening twice this year no matter what, but, you know, but you're not certain, or you're saying it's not imminent. So that tells me it's not next. Does that not? From what Fury is saying, I'm confident it's fighting twice this year. That's about it. And I'm confident it's not AJ next. He's not going to be the first of them two. And how these contracts work, it looks like Fury's not going to be neither. Or AJ's not going to be neither of them two. Fury has had a consistent pattern. He likes to go big fight and then two bum fights. Literally, he's done it every time. Every time. He fought Vlad. Dropped off the map. Fought two bums. Then fought Wilder. Then fought two bums again. And then fought Wilder. Now, he's been sitting on having to fought Wilder. What comes next? No joke. It's a scary pattern, really, when you look into it. We've got two bums coming next. That, that, that's Fury's pattern. And never mind Fury's pattern. This isn't me sitting there, oh, well, YB, you're making patterns out of nothing. He just said himself, AJ's not imminent, AJ's not next. Oh, and I'm fighting two fights this year, by the way. And one of them might be Wilder. Like, what? How are you telling us Wilder's more likely than AJ? How can AJ, how can Wilder get a spot of one of them? Surely it should be, well, I'm fighting twice this year and hopefully it should be AJ, both of them. Ideally, I want AJ for both of them. And it's scary that, well, it's crazy that Fury went on a meet on a media tour after AJ versus Pulev and said, oh, look, he didn't call me out, he didn't call me out. Now, we're into negotiations and Fury's not even linking him, at not one point in the last month of every interview with Fury has Fury linked himself with AJ? Has he put himself in the mix? In fact, he's done the opposite. 
It's not even a li it's not even lukewarm. It's mental how far he wants to distance himself from anywhere near AJ. But anyway, as I was kind of going on to explain before I went on that tirade, ultimately, you've got all these little bits and bobs adding up together, and it comes round to one big one big massive pie because with the mayor and Pacquiao thing, Fury saying, "Oh, we want the we want the mayor of Pacquiao money." John Fury saying we want 400 million. So clearly money's a big problem or allegedly now it's a big problem. And I've always said when people start talking about money, that's how you know they ain't serious. Because Fury's never moaned about money before. When he was fighting Wilder for peanuts, money wasn't a problem. He said, oh well, I love the sport. I'll fight one of the cobbles. Oh, cobbles? You'll get 100 million. Just take 100 million and be on with it. Now all of a sudden it's all about the money and oh well, the fight needs to build. Fury said, oh, look at Mayor Pacquiao, that built and look how much money that made. It's almost, or well, not almost, it is. Fury knows he's cashing out. He knows his time's up now. The gig's up and I need to make this a big farewell swan song because I'm not serious. I need to make sure this is, and to be honest, he's already made for life, but clearly... I'm not sure what he's trying to do, if the truth be known. I'm really not sure what he's trying to do. I'm all... Yeah, I'm not sure. Because he could retire just now off the bat. But it's almost like, to me, he wants to... He's addicted to the attention. He wants the attention still, but he doesn't want to get in there and do what needs to be done and carry out his obligations as a lineal champion, if that makes sense. He doesn't want to really get stuck in and have a hard fight. He wants to fight Wilder again. Or no, well... I'm not even sure he wants to do that, but the point is, he don't want to be with AJ for some reason. And I think that sparring session, I just did a video on AJ, and look what happened with Vlad. When Vlad fought AJ, yeah, Vlad, AJ sent Vlad into retirement, into an aggressive retirement as well. A, a turning down £30 million retirement. What kind of, how hard was AJ hitting Vlad for Vlad to reject a free £30 million? Now, what's that got to do with Fury, YB? Well, what do we know? Fury's been in there with AJ before. Fury's been in there with an amateur AJ. And not only did he go in there with him, afterwards, he was on the radio and ranting and raving about how, how hard he got clobbered. And that was an AJ that was 10 years ago. So, people will say, oh, YB, you're thinking way too much into this, or you haven't got no proof. Well, we know, factually, Vlad went in there with... AJ, and he wouldn't go in there again for no matter money and no matter love. Doesn't want it. Didn't want no part of it. So is it a stretch to assume, or to f at least, is it fair to put it out there? Fury's probably thinking the same thing. I don't want, I, just don't, I, I don't care about the amount of money. Or I'm going to need so much money, it's going to be unbelievable. It's unrealistic the amount of money I'm going to want to go in there with AJ. Because Vlad didn't want to do it, did he? If, if, I'm sure there's people out there who say, oh, you're having a laugh, or oh, you've, uh, of course fighters want to fight. Do they? Of course fighters want to fight fights they know they can win, or easy fights, I'm not so sure. Well, put it this way, I've not been convinced, I've not seen it. If fighters want to fight, we shouldn't be sitting here today, I shouldn't be having to do this video, debating and questioning why Fury don't want to attach himself to this event. You heard it out of his own mouth, the fight's not happening next, it's not imminent. Will it happen in the future? Uh, probably, uh, maybe with a Pacquiao. That's the first I've heard of it. If Fury had been saying this, yeah, six months ago, I wouldn't be shocked now, would I? But to sit there and say, oh, AJ don't want it, I'm going to give it to the big bodybuilder, I'm going to fill you in, and now all of a sudden we're hearing about Mayor Pacquiao, or we're hearing about, oh, it's not imminent, and oh, there's, lo there's a load of factors that come into it, and people don't know behind the scenes, follow the white rabbit thing, there's a load of, there's a load of reasons, or a load of ways the fight won't happen. All the neg negativity, all the negative Nelly. So, we're going to see anyway. But I thought I'd do the video because there's, there's a load of suspect things Fury's been saying. And another key point, people will say, oh, this is old or oh, whatever. Listen, I don't care what you, what, what, I don't care what you man have got to say or not say about it. The fact of the matter is, if AJ had made these comments, all of them, may have a Pacquiao, it's not imminent. Anything else, oh, there's, there's a load of things that can scupper the fight. You man would be going mad. You'd be doing the same video again and again. You wouldn't worry about no date. And rightly so, to be fair to you. Rightly so. If this, 
If AJ made them comments and a week had passed, you'd be well within your right to do a video on it. So don't be at me saying, oh, is, oh, the, oh the signed agreement invalidates all of this. No, it don't. Because Frank Warren's still telling you, the fight ain't happening. Came out and said it, and then turned into a C-19 pandemic thing specialist. Turned into a legal, turned into a legal wizard. Turned into a regulatory wizard.